Hey travelers, welcome back to another culinary experience from Nomad Travel Adventures. Simon here, and today I'll be taking you through a small food tour on my recent trip to Vienna, Austria. This city is filled with culinary wonders and luxurious places to eat, but what really stands out is their signature dishes, so join me as I take you through my top five. Hello fellow food lovers and travelers, uh, Simon here. Welcome back to another episode of Nomad Travel Adventures. I will be taking you on another culinary journey. Um, right now it's Monday and we are in the busy city of Vienna. So um, we're gonna be trying some awesome Austrian food. I have been doing a lot of research for you guys so that you don't have to. And I have found the very best places that you can go to while you're here to try some of the most typical dishes. I will be taking you along my culinary adventure and I just wanted to say thanks to all of you guys who have been watching. If you haven't already subscribed, do so. I will be posting a lot more food videos and travel videos so you can check those out in the future. Now, I am gonna go have dinner at this place which is supposed to have the best Wiener schnitzel. So, what's a Wiener schnitzel? It's, it's kind of like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Italian um, version of it, but it's a Milanessa. And basically, it's like um, pork or veal. Um, it's battered and then deep fried. So, I am looking forward to it. The first place we're going to go to is actually called Guest House. Um, and it is supposed to have the very best. So, let's go check it out. It was time to have my first dinner in Vienna, and of course I wanted to indulge myself in one of their most popular dishes. Wiener Schnitzel is the number one typical Austrian plate everyone should try. This top dish is one of the most authentic recipes originating from Austria and is very similar to the Italian Milanessa. While on the journey, I would also attempt to get a taste of their signature goulash dish. There was one very authentic restaurant that had particularly good reviews for their schnitzels, and that was Guest House Elsner. I arrived early for dinner, and it was approximately 7.30, so I had no problem getting a seat. The place wasn't particularly the most modern, but it had this very homey vibe which made me settle in my seat in order to get ready for the dinner ahead. First came the very light and frothy authentic Austrian beer, and then instead of the regular goulash, I ordered the goulash soup, which was the perfect complement to this cold wintry day. It had quite the kick to it, which really helped me to prepare for what was to come. This, with a basket of their Austrian bread, was really filling, but I had to leave room for the main course. The Wiener Schnitzel was made out of chicken, even though the more original one is made from veal. Still, it was quite tasty and came with their version of their Austrian potato salad. The outside was very crisp and light, and it went so well with the salad on the side. All this for just 15 euros with 40 cents. It's no surprise that I managed to finish in no time. Okay guys, so we just got done eating at Glass House Elsner, and um, I just wanna say it was so good. My favorite thing is surprisingly gonna be the goulash soup. Um, it had this like kind of spicy kick to it, so I really loved it. Um, and then also the schnitzel that I got, it wasn't pork. Typically, the most typical authentic thing you can get is the veal. They don't have that usually, so you go with the pork. But I tried to keep it a little healthier, and so I got the chicken. It was still really, really amazing. I was so full though. I will not lie to you. I think I ate too much, but I mean, I didn't really have anything the whole entire day. I just had some tea and then I had a light breakfast this morning. So yeah, anyways, uh, I'm gonna head back now and hopefully tomorrow morning um, we can go somewhere else. So stay tuned. Hey guys, so I am getting ready to take you on to the second place. Um, I just woke up so it is breakfast time and I thought since I had such a heavy dinner yesterday I am going to just have a light breakfast so I'm going to take you to get some strudel. Um, this actually originated here in Austria so it'll be really awesome to see uh, what it tastes like. I'm gonna take you to Cafe Central they're supposed to have one of the best strudels around so let's uh, go see what that's like. Thank you. 
What could be more famous than your typical Austrian strudel? And no, toaster strudel is not behind the original concept for this one. Everyone at some point in their life has tasted apple strudel, but did you know it originated in Austria? Well, we would go on a light brunch to try this famous dessert at the very elegant Cafe Central in the downtown area. This was a great place to taste some of the best desserts in Vienna and also to just get a cup of coffee. They are known to have some of the best strudel in the city, so I had to go and find out why. It came with a choice of vanilla ice cream or vanilla syrup. I wanted to be able to try it without anything on top, so I got the syrup on the side. The crust was quite flaky and it was also a lot thicker than I anticipated, but the apple filling was cooked to perfection and it wasn't overwhelmingly sweet. The vanilla syrup added a perfect hint of sweetness and moisture to an otherwise otherworldly dessert. Seriously, I was on cloud nine. This, along with a cup of coffee, made for one of the best brunches I had had. Who knew my culinary adventure would take such a sweet turn? Of course, the portion had been enough, and it was time for me to go. After paying 12 euros for the meal, I explored their wide range of Austrian desserts. This place was the perfect stop for a light snack or a relaxed lunch. Hey guys, so we just got done trying the strudel. Um, it was actually really, really good. I thought it would be sweeter than what it was, and it wasn't, which was really great. Um, I got it with the vanilla sauce, and I think it added like a nice little touch to it. You can also get it with ice cream. Um, it is a little bit more expensive, and then uh, with the coffee. It was um, just an overall really nice place as well. Like The decorations were awesome, and uh, um, I was fairly impressed. Anyway, um, I'm gonna check back with you near lunchtime because I've got something special planned. So yeah, stay tuned. Okay, travelers, so we got to try some um, strudel and now I am getting ready to take you to another typical dish here in Vienna. Well, actually, I don't know if you guys have heard of Vienna sausage, but um, ever since I was little, I would always hear about this and since I'm in Vienna, I thought, well, why not? Um, so we're going to try something typical here in Vienna in a non-so-typical fashion. Um, we're actually going to this place called Vienna Sausage, and, and they're supposed to have some of the best hot dogs um, made with Vienna sausages. So let's go check it out. Okay, so I wanted to try something a little more fun. Vienna definitely has this more adventurous side, and I needed to find it in the form of their authentic Vienna sausage. So, I thought why not take the next stop and go to a place where they would take something as original as a Vienna sausage and turn it into the best hog you will ever have. If you're looking for that fast and funky pit stop, look no further than Vienna sausage. Think you know a hot dog? Think again. This place has managed to make a name for itself by building on top of two major culinary foundations, Vienna sausage and hot dogs. Come in for a quick bite by ordering their customized hot dogs with different toppings. I got the classic Vienna dog with mustard and horseradish on top. The Vienna sausage was quite simple, but the start was a combination of the toppings. That with the play on texture and my taste buds were on fire. Seriously though, it was spicy. $5.99 for the price of the dog with no drink included. A nice little snack, this place was the pit stop I needed to get back on the road. Alright guys, so I just got done eating at Vienna Sausage. Um, to be perfectly honest, it was delicious. Um, I got the Vienna Classic and it had sauerkraut, uh, mustard, and it was really spicy. I really needed that Coke because otherwise I would not have been able to finish it. It was, it was surprisingly spicy. Um, I will say it might be a little overrated just because I felt like I was expecting more like I had seen online reviews on this place and um, they said it was really really good so I was expecting a lot more it was great the toppings were great but the sausage itself I, I think I've just had better sausages either way if you feel like eating something like light um, and want to go somewhere for lunch that's a little bit more fun check this place out now I will say this, I am going to take you to one last place before I head back 
and um, I think you guys will find that this one's pretty special, so stay tuned. All right, fellow foodies, I hope you've enjoyed everything so far. Now I am going to take you um, to a very special place. Um, I actually heard about this place from one of my friends. Uh, she basically recommended that I go here because this is where um, the Tarta Satcher originated, which that's basically like um, this cake. Um, it's chocolate and then it's got raspberry like filling in there. So it's really, really good. Um, it's really popular in all of Europe, but it actually originated where I'm going now. So uh, obviously I'm going to take you to Hotel Satcher, which is the place where this cake was invented. So join me. Once again, it was time to satisfy my sweet tooth, which is why I decided to end my night by going to one of the more upscale parts of Vienna and making a stop at Hotel Sacher. For those of you that don't know, this is where the famous Sacher cake originated, so if you're a fan of chocolate cake, this is the one you don't want to miss. Of course, be prepared to spend a little more than the usual since this is like the Gucci of chocolate cakes. This hotel is named after the famous cake, and you can go to the restaurant to try a slice of the original thing. Prepare to feel like royalty as you sit in the luxurious cafe while waiting for your 5 star piece of cake. You can order the original or choose from a wide variety of versions of the Satcher cake. I felt like trying the real deal with whipped cream, so looking around the place, the ambience was really quite something else. Good thing I like the color red. Once the cake arrived, it was a beautiful piece of art. Of course, I had to get some tea with it, otherwise it would have been too much. If that had been the morning, coffee might have been good as well. After my first bite, I noticed the cake was quite rich. When I had tried it in other places, it had been more moist, but this was not the case. The whipped cream really complemented the rich and savory taste of the cake, which after nearly minutes was already gone. 1270 for some teen cake was not something that I was used to, but that's not so bad after eating such a divine piece of cake. Hey guys, as you can see, I am standing right behind Hotel Sachet. Um, we just had that cake. It was really good. It was a lot richer than what I remember. I guess I've tried it in other places, so I guess it would make sense that this is where it originated because um, it was really just a lot drier than what I'm used to and it was very raspberry tasting. So with that being said, I highly recommend that you come here. I mean, it's probably the most expensive piece of cake that I've ever had, but um, it was totally worth it. So if you can, go check it out. I do have one more place that I'm gonna take you guys to, but you'll just have to wait until tomorrow. Okay, so I'll see you then, bye. Hello fellow food lovers. I know that you are ready for more. Um, right now it's about lunchtime. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I did that. That was really corny, but um, I really uh, wanna go to one more place. Uh, I've developed kind of a sweet tooth here in Vienna, so I wanna kinda get away from that and show you guys something with a little bit more substance. So I am about to head off to, uh, I think it's called Nodal Market, and it's, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but they're noodles, and basically what these are is they're um, boiled potato dumplings that are filled with stuff, so we're going to go check those out. They're very typical here in um, Eastern Europe, so it's not just typical in Vienna, but uh, it's supposed to be one of the nicer places that um, we can go to and see, and it's also one of the cheaper places, so if you're on a budget, this one might be a good idea for you. After a jam-packed day of traveling, it was time to get my grub on. This time, I wanted to stay away from the sweets and try something with a little more substance. So, I headed off to the highly reviewed Noddle Manufacturer, where potato dumplings ruled supreme. This was a bit out of the way of the city center, and it was the furthest out of all the places I had tried. Getting there was pretty easy though, and all I did was take the subway, which is close to one of the stops. Once I arrived, the place was pretty packed as it was also the smallest restaurant I had been to since arriving in Vienna. The place was full of locals and tourists alike, which were here to eat from a variety of noddles displayed through the window pane. 
You can also get tea or any of the novels to go, which is a pretty good option if you're out of time or need something to take back to the hotel. With so many choices, including some sweet options, I was a little lost, but the owner was right there ready to help me choose the perfect noddle. I wanted the most authentic, so she suggested that I try the smoked and cured pork dumpling that came with sauerkraut. I didn't hesitate, and as soon as it arrived at my table, it was the most beautiful dumpling I had ever seen. The noddles are stuffed potato dumplings, so when I cut mine open, the amazing aroma of the delicately smoked pork really took over my appetite. It may look small, but it was packed with flavor. The taste was perfect, and the blend of smoky and earthy flavors were only highlighted by the sauerkraut. The texture was soft, and with every bite, it was as if everything just melted in your mouth. Beyond delicious, I washed it down with the water and was ready for more. This time, I let my sweet tooth get the best of me, and I got the apple strudel version. Delicate and beautiful, this model was topped off with a very light vanilla sauce which brought all of the ingredients together. Once again, it was soft, but this model was not made with potato, but rather a soft sort of dough which also melted in your mouth. The apples were perfectly cooked and you could feel the slight taste of cinnamon which never overpowered the dish. After two noddles, I was more than satisfied and my palate was happy that I had gone through this journey. I wanted to get different ones to try but I had a flight to catch and had to leave pretty soon. Still, this was one of the most unique concepts in Vienna and for 950 euros, by far my cheapest meal. Okay, so we just got done eating at the noddle manufacturer and I'm not gonna lie, it was one of the better places that I've tried. It was such an awesome concept. Um, I got the the original one that had like pork in it and it was smoked and you could really taste it. it combined really well with the sauerkraut. Sauerkraut wasn't overwhelming and that one was made out of potato. Now the dessert one um, was it? It was made out of like this dough thing and I think it had like apples inside um, and it was so good because it wasn't overwhelmingly sweet. So. Um, that made it even better. It had like this vanilla sauce on top, which was uh, really, really amazing. It reminded me of the strudel that I actually had before. Um, out of all the places, I think the top two on my list are going to be the first one and then this last place that I just tried. I just think those two were the winners overall in food. Um, the first place had awesome flavor and then um, this last place just had an awesome concept, very original and it was really good as well. Um, anyways, I am going to end the video here because I'm about to head over to my flight. I leave today so I gotta go. But um, if you haven't already done so, do subscribe to my video. I would appreciate that. I will keep you guys posted on more foods from all over the world. And thanks again for watching, guys. I hope to see you on the next video, okay? This is Nomad. I'm signing out. See ya. Like my videos? Subscribe for more.